What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today, we're looking at the Glen Caddam 10 year old. Stick around. So we're back with another Glen Caddam today. The last time we looked at a Glen Caddam on this channel, I believe it was called the Reserva Andalusia. I remember that, that one was not too much to my taste. I was kind of disappointed with that one, but hopefully we're gonna fare a lot better today. We have the famous 10 year old with us. Anyway, a little bit about Glen Caddam before we get started. Uh, it's a Highland distillery and it's one of the older ones. I believe it was built in 1825 uh, and it's changed hands several times, of course, over that time, eventually falling into the hands of Angus Dundee, who are the current distillery owners. Uh, this was shut down or was mothballed rather in 2000, only to be opened again in 2003 and it's a really big distillery, much bigger than you might think it is. This one has a capacity of 1.5 million liters per year. However, Glen Caddam is what's known as a workhorse distillery, which means the majority of the whiskey that they produce ends up going into blends. Uh, most notably, you have the Ballantine's blend. There's another one called uh, Stewart's Cream of the Barley. Never heard of that one, but the single malt lineup that we have from them now was actually only released in, I believe, 2008 or 2009, something like that. And to this day, it's not something that gets a lot of hype or fanfare. It's still one of your more obscure distilleries. Which is actually not that surprising because the distillery as a whole comes off pretty low key. Um, the whiskey they produce doesn't have a lot of gimmicks. You don't get too much over the top marketing from them. And even the distillate itself from Glen Caddam is definitely on the calm, uh, gentler side of things. So overall, it just comes across as a very unassuming brand. Anyway, our 10 year old here is probably one of Glen Caddam's best selling whiskeys. I don't know the numbers I'm guessing there, but it's definitely one of the more famous expressions. Um, it gets very good reviews. A lot of online reviewers will say it's a great budget go to. It'll make their sort of like, you know, affordable top 10 lists, that kind of thing. So as far as entry level expressions go, this one is a really well regarded one. For our maturation, this was entirely matured in bourbon barrels and from what they say online, apparently this is a very good representation of the distillate that we get from Glen Caddam. Now I've said in previous reviews that uh, spirit driven whiskeys are pretty hard to pull off, but when you get it right, they can be absolutely beautiful. So why don't we find out about this one? Let's hop into a review, see what this whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. One nice thing about Glen Caddam is they give us healthy ABVs and a natural presentation. So our ABV on this one is going to be 46%. It is of course unchill filtered and our color natural. So we have a beautiful natural color to our whiskey here. It's a very light whiskey and tell you what, this straw white wine color is just as beautiful as the darkest sherried whiskeys out there. Not a drop of E150A in here and I love it. For the label itself, um, Glen Caddam look is fine. It doesn't really blow me away, but you know, it's decent. What I appreciate is that it's pretty simple. It's pretty fluff free. So my presentation score for this is gonna be three and a half out of five. We also have unchill filtered and no added coloring front and center on the label, which is great. Not only that, our little blurb on the back here explains why they don't chill filter, why they don't add color, you know, retain aromatic components, uh, keep things natural, blah, blah, blah. All of that's great. So while I don't love the aesthetic of the label, I do respect what they've done here. For our nose. So a pretty quiet, pretty calm nose, but you have a little bit of pointedness in there, a little bit of sharpness, nothing too much. You have some oak, you have some oak spice in there, definitely some vanilla, some lemon lozenges, some lemongrass, you also have like a sweet white wine note, like maybe maybe a Tokai wine, something like that. And you have some unleavened dough. So this is a simple nose, but it's very fresh and inviting. Let's try the palate. Mm. Okay, uh, fresh and juicy. We've got some sweet white wine in here, some sweet green grapes, you have like straw or hay in here, uh, golden delicious apples, apple pie, light yellow honey in here. We have a bright maltiness and we have some ginger ale. And now our finish. Mm. 
Mm, very nice. Uh, white pepper. We have lemon hard candy in here. Definitely some butteriness to it. Uh, what else? You get some white chocolate in there. Golden delicious apples again. Golden barley. Uh, there's kind of like a cologne or floral type note to this. And uh, what else? You have some gentle sandalwood in here. Finish would be medium in length. What a beautiful whiskey this is. Uh, what they say is true. It is definitely spirit driven. It's distillate driven. You are getting the Glen Cadam character through and through. And as I mentioned earlier, spirit driven whiskeys are kind of hard to pull off. Oftentimes you get like those rough edges. You get a little bit of hotness to it, but certainly not the case here. We have a beautifully balanced 10 year old. And you know, there's a reason why most entry level expressions do come in at 12 years old. There's not a lot of brands that can pull off a beautiful 10 year old without any roughness or sharp edges to it. Now, of course, that's discounting uh, Isla whiskeys, heavily peated whiskeys, whiskeys like that. They don't count. They work at a younger age. But for unpeated expressions, you have a few out there that do work. You have stuff like Glen Morangy, you have your Aaron, you have Springbank's Hazelburn, to name a few. There's a few really nice unpeated 10 year old whiskeys out there, but they're few and far between. And the reason those all work is because they have a softer, more delicate distillate than most. And that's certainly true of our Glen Caddam here. This is a soft whiskey uh, to the point that too much oak could easily overwhelm a whiskey like this. And then you'd be losing an essential part of that Glen Caddam character. Now, of course, you do have oak in this, mostly on the nose, but the way it presents itself is in a very controlled way that complements the whiskey. And I have to say the age suits this whiskey perfectly. I think they chose the perfect time to bottle it. Uh, 10 years, you still have a lot of that youth, that freshness, that vibrancy in the whiskey. But of course, 10 years in oak has rounded out those rougher edges. So the balance is really, really good here. It's a massive step up from uh, the Reserva Andalusia, which again was my previous review. That one didn't really work for me. That one was a no age stated whiskey. There was some sherry cast or some kind of cast play that I didn't like uh, and the balance was off. And basically everything they got wrong with that one, they're getting right with this one. But it's worth noting that this is not a super complex or very layered whiskey. In fact, it's pretty bare bones. Uh, you have your distillate, you have your bourbon barrels, and that's pretty much it. But luckily, the flavors from both of those things are exceptional. And the character that we get is uh, clean, it's bright, it's mellow, and it's just very pleasing. And it's also a pretty malty whiskey. And I like malt forward whiskeys, but the maltiness in this is a little bit different. Uh, if you have malt forward profile, oftentimes it comes off a little bit heavy or thick, uh, but the maltiness in here really matches the tone of the other flavors in the whiskey, which is to say that it's quite bright, quite clean. So overall, our character here is very high pitched, if that makes sense. Uh, there's nothing heavy or brooding about it. Now, I recently reviewed the Glen Morangy 18 and I liked it. I gave it a good score, but I also said it was a soft whiskey and you know, of course, different whiskey, but similarly to our Glen Caddam here, it falls on the sort of like calmer, gentler side of things. But the difference is with this one, we've got our 46%. We have that natural presentation and it really does elevate the whiskey. So despite being on the gentler side, our flavors have that much more intensity, that much more presence. So yeah, this whiskey is a total charmer. It's honest, it's no frills, it's bright, it's mellow, it's clean, it's all of those things. Uh, I totally get why it gets so much love. Personally, I'm gonna score this one in 87. I've had a lot of it in the past. I've bought several bottles. I keep coming back to it and, you know, I don't wanna to get too poetic or anything here, but this stuff is just, it's sunshine in a bottle. It's so good. And I honestly think this is one of your best entry level, go-to budget whiskeys on the market. It's also a great example of an undisturbed Highland profile done right. You know, it's the opposite of these big brand, gimmicky, over the top whiskeys that are all over the place these days. And I think that's why this brand does get quite a bit of respect, even though it is a little bit obscure. There's zero flash to this stuff, zero flash in the label, zero flash in the whiskey itself. So it's a good one for whiskey purists. It doesn't hook you with any kind of peat or sherry, no kind of special cast finish here. This is a fluff free, bare bones, high quality, naturally presented whiskey. And honestly, what else could you ask for? What else could you ask for? You could ask for good value and you've got that too. This is a very affordable whiskey. I think it's one of the cheaper 10 year olds out there and it's worth every penny of that. So of course, easy stuff to recommend based on value. Now where I live, the availability of this stuff is a little bit spotty, but I think generally speaking, it's not very hard to find. And compared to other affordable 10 year olds on the market, this one absolutely holds its own. It's got better ABV, more heft and more character than stuff like your Glen Morangy 10 which is a whiskey I enjoy, by the way. 
uh, if you want to compare it to something like your Aaron 10. Aaron's going to have a little bit more complexity. I think there's more stuff going on with that whiskey, but personally speaking, I find the character in our Glen Caddam more charming. Also, I'm not usually one to get, I guess you'd call it opinionated, like some other reviewers out there, but I do feel like this is the kind of whiskey that us as consumers should be supporting with our business. As I said, it's flash-free stuff, it's naturally presented, it's affordable, it really is all about the quality with this whiskey. So if my, if my description sounds good to you, I would encourage you, go out there, buy the stuff. All right, that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried our Glen Caddam 10 here? What were your thoughts on it? Did you enjoy it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you wanna see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.